Hi. Uh, today uh, we are discussing uh, the mechanisms of uh, lens-induced glaucomas. Uh, some of you asked in the Telegram group uh, that all these terms are so confusing uh, and how to remember them and is there a trick, is there an easy way to remember this and while these terms may seem confusing and uh, difficult to understand but actually uh, the meaning, the mechanism is contained in the root word itself. Uh, so in this video I'll make it easy for you uh, to understand all these six terms that you wouldn't even have to revise this topic. It will just uh, come naturally to you. right? Uh, so let's get started. Uh, there are six uh, terms uh, that you need to pay attention to. Uh, these are the phacogenic uh, glaucomas, right? lens induced glaucomas. Uh, the six terms are phacomorphic, uh, phacotopic, uh, phacolytic, phacoantigenic, phacoanaphylactic, uh, which are the same, and then lens particle glaucoma. Uh, so basically, uh, the first two are uh, secondary angle closure glaucomas, and the last three uh, are secondary open angle glaucomas. Right? Phacoantigenic, phacoanaphylactic are the same. Now let's look at each of these terms, and I'll side by side explain the mechanism of each of these glaucomas and it will be really easy for you. So let's first look at phacomorphic glaucoma. So the word phacomorphic, morphic is stands for morphology. Morphology means shape. So in this case, the shape of the lens is abnormal. Uh, something like an intumescent cataract uh, where there is thickening of the lens, right? Increase in the thickness of lens. Uh, is going to cause a phacomorphic glaucoma. What happens is that because of the thickness of the lens, uh, as you can see here, uh, if the thickness of the lens increases, uh, it is going to push uh, the lens iris diaphragm, it is going to push the lens iris diaphragm anteriorly or forward. Now, as you know that the aqueous humor is secreted in the posterior chamber and through the pupil, it comes into the anterior chamber and from the anterior chamber it flows through the angle of the anterior chamber into the trabecular meshwork uh, through into the Schlem's canal and then the episcleral veins and then into the dural sinuses that is the drainage of the aqueous humor. Uh, when the lens iris diaphragm is pushed forward the resistance will increase to the flow of aqueous humor from the posterior chamber to the anterior uh, chamber aqueous humor has to flow through the pupil now it will not be able to uh, flow easily through the pupil so this will cause further ballooning of the iris the iris will be pushed forwards towards the cornea which will obstruct this angle causing a closed angle glaucoma so basically increase in the thickness of the lens is causing lens iris diaphragm to be pushed forward which is causing a relative pupillary block and a secondary angle closure glaucoma that is phacomorphic glaucoma. So phacomorphic glaucoma causes a secondary angle closure glaucoma. Now Let's look at the second term, the phacotopic glaucoma. Topi uh, or ectopia basically refers to an abnormal position. Topi means position, ectopia means abnormal position. So in phacotopic glaucoma, the position of the lens is abnormal. The normal lens is situated in the patellar fossa. It could be subluxated or dislocated. In subluxation, it will be in the patellar fossa. In dislocation, it will be uh, not in its normal position. It will move away from the patellar fossa. So, in any case where there is anterior subluxation or anterior dislocation of lens, again the same mechanism will come into the picture. It will push the lens iris diaphragm anteriorly forwards, again causing a pupillary block and obstructing the flow of the aqueous humor from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber that will again cause an obstruction of the angle 
the iridocorneal angle will narrow down and that will again cause a secondary angle closure glaucoma right so in phacotopia phacotopic glaucoma in ectopia lentis or anterior subluxation of the lens there is going to be pupillary block uh, aqueous humor drainage is going to be affected it will cause an increase in iop and a secondary angle closure glaucoma so that is your second type i hope these two phacomorphic phacotopic are clear now let's look at the third variety, phacolytic glaucoma. Lysis basically means dissolution or breakdown, correct? So what is happening here is that a hypermature cataract, there is going to be breakdown of the high molecular weight protein of the lens. The, the, the fibers of the lens are made up of high molecular weight proteins in hypermature cataract these proteins will undergo a catalytic reaction. They'll basically break down, right? When they break down to a small size, they are able to dissolve or they are able to cross the lens capsule and they come into the anterior chamber. These proteins will leak from the lens into the anterior chamber. Inside the anterior chamber, they will elicit a macrophage response. This protein and macrophage uh, mixture, amalgam, uh, will go and block the trabecular mesh work, right? And as you can see in this photo, uh, there is no problem with the angle. The angle is going to be open, right? Uh, aqueous humor is going to flow here, uh, but when it reaches the trabecular mesh work, uh, the pores in the trabecular mesh work are clogged because of the lens particle and because of the macrophages. So this is going to cause a secondary open angle clock. So in phacolysis, there is lysis or breakdown of the high molecular weight protein of the lens, which goes and clocks the trabecular meshwork causing a secondary open angle. Now let's look at the fourth variety. It's very similar to the phacolytic uh, but it's got some differences. In lens particle glaucoma, what happens is that the lens particles from the cortex, these will go and clog the trabecular meshwork, right? But the difference here is that in lens particle glaucoma, the lens capsule has to be breached, right? This is a requirement for lens particle glaucoma. Let's say the patient underwent a cataract surgery or he under or he suffered from some penetrating trauma. So what happens in that case is that uh, in cataract surgery, for example, uh, some cortex was left behind, right? Because in some cases, the cataract uh, surgery, uh, even though it's uneventful, some part of the cortex can be sticky. Uh, so to say, it is not possible to remove it completely. So some lens particles are going to be left inside the anterior chamber by mistake, inadvertently. These lens particles will go and clog the trabecular meshwork, right? Again, uh, they will, uh, the angle continues to be open. There is no problem with the angle, just that the pose of the trabecular meshwork are obstructed. So this is a lens particle glaucoma. Do note that a similar mechanism is happening in phacolytic glaucoma. But in phacolytic glaucoma, the lens capsule was not breached. The lens capsule was intact. It was just that a hypermature cataract was causing uh, the lysis of the high molecular weight proteins and they were going passing through the intact lens capsule into the anterior chamber. Whereas in lens particle, there is a breach in the lens capsule. The breach in the lens capsule could be because of cataract surgery or because of some penetrating trauma, but that is an essential requirement. So lens particle glaucoma is again a secondary open angle glaucoma. Now the last variety of lens induced glaucoma is 
phaco antigenic glaucoma it was previously called phaco anaphylactic glaucoma because it was thought to be a allergic response to lens protein now in phaco antigenic glaucoma what is happening is that the lens particles there is some immune uh, predisposition uh, because of which the lens particles when they come into the anterior chamber uh, they elicit a strong granulomatous inflammatory response a strong antigenic response so there is going to be a strong ac reaction the macrophages are going to uh, interact with the lens particle and this uh, combination is going to go and clog the trabecular meshwork right and it's again going to be a secondary open angle glaucoma right there are very subtle differences between these three uh, because all of these have the same mechanism all of these are secondary open angle glaucomas uh, but it's possible to differentiate between the three conditions uh, clinically and based on the history in phacolytic uh, glaucoma you will see a hypermature cataract in lens particle glaucoma you will see a history of cataract surgery or some penetrating trauma uh, whereas in phaco antigenic uh, glaucoma uh, the keratic precipitates the ac cells ac flare the ac reaction is going to be strong so that will give you some clue to the diagnosis of uh, phaco antigenic glaucoma i hope all these five conditions are clear to you just to briefly describe uh, let's recap all the five conditions quickly so you have five phacogenic glaucomas lens induced glaucomas three of which are secondary open angle glaucomas these are phacolytic lens particle phacoantigenic in phacolytic hypermature cataract there is a capsule has to be intact high molecular weight proteins will go and clog the trabecular mesh in lens particle glaucoma there is a history of surgery or trauma there has to be a breach in the capsule and it's again going to be open angle phaco antigenic glaucoma there is a strong immune response against lens particles there is a strong ac reaction in phaco antigenic again the capsule has to be breached either by trauma or some surgery then phaco morphic and phaco topic these are the secondary angle closure glaucomas in phacomorphic the shape of the lens is abnormal as in an intumescent cataract in which the lens thickness is increasing so it's going to push the uh, lens iris diaphragm forward and cause a pupillary block and a secondary angle closure glaucoma whereas in phacotopic glaucoma topia meaning the position of the lens is going to be abnormal there could be an anterior subluxation of the lens again pushing the lens iris diaphragm forward and causing a pupillary block and secondary angle closure glaucoma this was briefly the mechanisms uh, of the five lens induced glaucomas so that you don't get confused with what these terms mean uh, in the next video i'll be discussing each of these conditions how they clinically present uh how we uh what are the signs on examination and how we finally manage these conditions so that is a a much in depth video i'll be coming out with that video soon i hope you liked this video uh, please hit the like button if you did also subscribe if you are new here i'll see you in the next video goodbye